uh, more or less the same. Uh, I think uh, last year has been uh, a period of consolidation, uh, and also uh, a lot of the anxieties that we had around um, uh, general and apparel is more or less behind us. Uh, while the numbers do not indicate to that extent yet, but we are seeing a smart recovery in the second half of last year and even the first quarter of this year. So, um, so GMA has moved uh, from 23.04 to 22.37. It's it's a drop, but more or less it's 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 coming back. But uh, just to preempt some of the questions uh, that may come on this, um, we are not going to be 28% or 27% like it used to be earlier. Um, a broad trend line will be around uh, the current. Uh, uh, run rates of around 23% is the sense we get. Yeah, but otherwise it's been a good year. Um, I mean, most of the numbers are, are have been shared, and I would take more specific uh, questions um, in a, in the Q&A and discuss more about this. We go to the next slide. Cluster-based expansion strategy continues to be the same. It's again uh, principle is more of the same. Try and open as many stores in ex existing markets. We also keep trying to go to new states, new regions, new cities, but otherwise the broad, broad principle is uh, if there's an opportunity to deploy capital in existing markets, uh, it, it's a better option. And so we opened um, 41 stores um, in, 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 in the last year gone by. And um, as usual, it, um, uh, the numbers look good. We're all doing fine in all the new stores opened also. So it's it's a usual day at work, broadly, from that standpoint. Then come to DMART ready. Uh, again, we had said last year that uh, la in the last year analyst meet that um, this year would be a year of consolidation and we'll try and test whatever we have done. And hence, we added just one city. Again, um, the strategy around the e-commerce business, the DMART ready business, is very consciously to be uh, not very fast. Uh, we can generate significantly higher revenue than we do currently, but it's a conscious decision to fix the model, make it right, and uh, you know bring in high throughputs in the existing cities. That's the thinking that we have on this business. But obviously, we'll take more questions uh, on on our business as well as what's happening in the market uh, from a larger context of competition and all of that. Year wise store edition already said that we opened 41 stores. Uh, we maintain to deliver basis of past performance. That's what we keep saying. Um, so, number of stores opening will be around uh, these numbers going forward. But we, as usual, don't give out uh, statements in terms of what the exact number is, and uh, reasons also remain the same. But broadly, as a company, we are primed to uh, open equal to or even more than these number of stores. But uh, there are a lot of other factors that, that depend on our store opening numbers. So with that, I end my uh, uh, part of the presentation and I would request Niladri to uh, take over the operating and financial summary part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Neville. I take you through the bill cuts. So we delivered 30.3 crore bill cuts in the year just gone by. Like for like growth that we disclose is about stores which are mo open more than at least 24 months. We deliver 9.9% like for like growth. The total retail business area at the end of the fiscal 24 was about 15.1 million square feet. We opened 1.8 million square feet uh, area in the current year. And the revenue from sales uh, came at about 33,000 per square feet in FI24, very close to the FI20 number of 32,879. Moving on, the revenue from operations disclosed earlier, 49,533 crores we delivered in the standalone business. EBITDA margin of 8.3%, almost 4,100 crores of EBITDA. We delivered 5.4% PAT, about 2,695 crores. And the net cash flow from operations of 3,343 crores. All of the indices grew over the same period last year. We moved to the operating financial summary for the day's inventory payables. Our, our payables came at about 7.1 days, and the inventory is over 29 days of inventory, more or less similar to what we were in the pre-COVID pre -COVID period. 
debt in equity we all know we don't have debt but the debt that you see on the balance sheet is about the as116 disclosure and the equity of about 19281 crores of equity fixed asset turnover ratio came at about 3.6 very very close to the numbers that we had been trailing even pre covid and inventory turnover ratio about 14.6 and finally the return on net worth and, and roc the return on roc came at about 19.1% marginally lower than fi23 and uh, return on net worth about 15.1% slide 13 has the key financials for avenue supermarkets and the stand alone and console, and console sales grew by 18.4% gross margin reduction of about 37 bips and pbt reduction of 43 bips led by those gross, the gross margin slide and a bit of cost increases in other expenses that came up and the pat del delivery of uh, 2556 crores as uh, a 2697 crores which was a 5.4% growth the, uh, we must point out that last year we had an ex exceptional tax gain so ignoring the tax gain of the prior year the pat improved by close to 12% at console level the sales improved by 18.6% of 50789 crores and the pat delivery of 6.6% growth without the one time tax advantage of prior year the pat grew by 13.5% to 2536 crores the key subsidiary financials avenue e-commerce delivered a 31.7% sales increase of close to 2900 crores and we had a loss of 185 crores which was a 2.4% loss reduction over the prior year avenue food plaza 177 crores of sales and a loss of about close to 6 crores is an expansion phase Aligned retail trade of a subsidiary which does uh, grocery packing, but 2,800 crores of sales and a PAT of 33 crores, improved by 44 percent. That's the summary from the financials and, op and operating section. I think we can now open the floor for uh, Q&A. Thank you, Nilagiri. Thank you, Nilagiri. Um, so we'll uh, just open the Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abhinish Roy from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my first question is on uh, the product mix you have uh, given. So I see that uh, foods is the only segment uh, which has gained uh, as a percentage of the mix, while uh, rest of the two have uh, seen a, a slight dip. Wanted to understand: Is it uh, purely because of the food inflation and? Uh, FY25 because FMCG companies in the HPC space will take a hike. Uh, the non-food FMCG uh, should uh, regain some of the lost share. Uh, what will be uh, your comment on that? Plus, uh, you are focusing more on uh, general merchandise and apparel. So, wanted to understand why it's not uh, visible in terms of uh, numbers. There was a dip of around 33 bits. When do you see this uh, reversing? So, Abhinesh, on the uh, food uh, contribution going higher, it was primarily uh, driven around agri food inflation. Uh, it was primarily driven on that. While uh, staples, if I look at uh, edible oils, went through a deflation period. But I think the minus oil uh, basket, uh, the agri side, that is the staple agri minus oil, went through unprecedented inflation during this period of time. So that is the reason why the food contribution has gone up. uh in the gm and uh, apparel side i think we had a larger issue on the apparel side but like i have commented last year apparel was smaller contributor in the gm mix so hence the blended impact was only what you see on the on the slide right uh so gm is more or less back on track uh, trending uh, equal to what we were prior to covid uh, apparel has done a very smart recovery Uh, we did did uh, very quick uh, uh, improvements there primarily around leadership team sizes all of that is in place in fact 70 80% of the work was already done and uh, if you if we look at the last two quarters performance uh, one thing to heartening to know is apparel is the highest growing category among all our categories 
Okay, so we are seeing, uh, and like I had commented last year, right? It is more of an internal issue on the apparel side. We just needed to build a very good leadership pipeline. And I think the, I'm, uh, in fact, quite delighted with the early. I didn't expect it to be improving so quickly, but, uh, but uh, I think the team has done a brilliant job. But still a long way to go, but uh, we're seeing brilliant green shoots on the apparel side of the business. Sure. My uh, second and last question will be on the DMART ready. So we have seen a year of consolidation and only one city getting added. So what were the learnings from there? And uh, we have seen other big commerce, for example, uh, now they are uh, seeing more consolidation, more on service rather than discounting. So rain fee, delivery fee, loyalty fee, a lot of fees are coming in. Uh, and that's good uh, from a overall business uh, sustainability perspective. I wanted to understand, uh, are you also thinking at some stage, uh, quick commerce and start charging for some of these? Because ultimately now it's more of convenience rather than pure discounting. Uh, plus, what will be your take? Is the worst behind on uh, discounting? Because then uh, Zepto has raised uh, huge uh, funding very recently. Recently, while the other two players seem to be uh, focusing more on uh, service rather than just discounting. So our whole perspective has always been Abhinesh is to uh, divert, uh, I mean, have a divergence in terms of an approach to the business. And we prefer not to do stuff like what most people try to do. So we continue to chart our own course on the e-commerce side of the business and we are, we are pretty uh, confident of expanding this business albeit not as fast as people expect it to be, but we'll continue with the current model. We don't intend to do any quick commerce. I think our model is pretty robust, and the learnings has been uh, try and get more and more revenue in the large town cities. That's the that's the low-hanging fruit. Um, that is where there's convergence between our model about our ability to deliver and also the expectation of the market. So a Bombay customer or an Ahmedabad customer or a Delhi customer, they like e-commerce. They like material coming to their home. Time is of sh you know short supply. Uh, Timetables are tough to manage. You know things like that. They 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 sometimes perceive going to. A, I mean I'm not saying everyone, but mostly the more affluent people, they would like to have a certain component of their grocery buying to come through e-commerce. I think serving that customer. And through our through our ready channel is sounds very interesting and promising. So we yes. we will continue with our own uh, method methodology of you know running the uh, ready business. Just one follow up on this and uh, then I end. So uh, could this be second year of consolidation and when they see you have DMART ready in few tier three cities also for example Kolhapur, Belgavi, Bhilai, Raipur and say Anand. So could these uh, be deprioritized and ultimately may not make much of a sense uh, given your uh, kind of a business model? Quite possible, quite possible. See, I think uh, brick and mortar retail is still very aspirational and still fun and enjoyable in small towns. And uh, we clearly see that from a psychological standpoint um, that customers enjoy going to sh uh, retail stores like ours in small towns. Okay, thanks. Uh, that's all for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arnab Mitra from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, thanks for taking the opportunity. Uh, so, Neville, my first question was on store expansion. I think last call you had mentioned you have invested in uh, uh, the people in the expansion side and also in some of the processes which will increase the capacity of adding stores. Uh, do you see that happen in FI25 or it's going to take some more time before you can significantly step up from this approximately 40 stores that you've been adding for the last uh, couple of years? And what are the other bottlenecks that you're still seeing in that capacity? So uh, I don't have a very, very clear, uh, concise answer in numbers for you, but I'll just give you a feeling and flavor of what we uh, intend to do here. Uh, we are primed and ready uh, in terms of opening around 40 stores per year, 40, 50, whatever. I mean, anything between that is what we are ready and we will deliver broadly. The office is subject to regulation, permission, all of that. But we have that kind of inventory to, to at least commit saying 40, 45, ho jayega, you know, every year. Uh, the way to look at our, our store opening trend is we'll do 40, 40 something. But in another two to three years, I think, 
we are all working towards in another two years this 40 should go to a 60 or a 70 per year we are we are working like that okay we're thinking about it like that but it'll be very lumpy so you will see a 40 40 40 suddenly it, it may go up a little bit higher okay that's the way we are thinking about it and working towards it see i've been saying this repeatedly uh, that Typically, 10 to 15 percent of my number count should be my new store opening. Broadly, that's the way we think about it. Yeah. So, so if that happens, then we'll get a very decent CAGR run rate over a 10, 15, 20 year period. That's how it has been in the past too, right? So, what, so, so, so for example, if I have 400 stores, then I should be opening 60 stores. If I have 800 stores then say 15 percent of 800 stores you know that's that's the north star that's the way we think about it uh, thanks for that Nagel. yeah um yeah, the, the second question i actually had was a follow-up on the quick commerce things so clearly one of the big changes last one year has been this big uh, you know scale up of quick commerce especially in the top six seven cities are you seeing any impact on your big city stores like a mumbai bangalore uh, kind of locations and does it in any way impact the future store potential in let's say the top 10 stores that you would have earlier in this uh, So any thoughts on you know how, how you're seeing this uh, evolve? Uh, yeah, actually uh, we've been crunching data for the last two years on this and how you know is it, um, how is uh, this format impacting us. Surprisingly it is not. If there is any one reason what impacts our metro revenues, it's actually our own ability to operate the stores. If, so if any store is not run well for whatever reason, uh, either it's an infrastructure issue or the store has already peaked out, delivering very, very high revenues per square feet, or the quality of management is not up to uh, the expectation. That's when these stores struggle. And not really because of the competitive context of specifically about uh, quick commerce. That's our analysis of things. But okay, if you say uh, a city that is not uh, having any intense quick commerce versus a city that has quick commerce, there could be a 1% to 2% CAGR, uh, SSG CAGR impact, could be. I mean, I don't have a very clear point of view there. I, I can't pinpoint it exactly, but will I say no, absolutely not? I will also not agree to that. Who sakta hai? Maybe a 1, 1, 1.5% kind of an impact could be there. But is any of my store declining, negative, do I see very large red flags? Absolutely not. Yeah. Understood. Uh, thanks. And just one last question. Any rethink, or uh, you have historically not had a big focus on fresh as a part of your mix, and that's one of the categories which at least quick commerce uh, companies say has had high growth and high margins. So anything that is changing which would uh, change your approach towards that category uh, versus what it is currently? That's just for my part. Brick and mortar, I don't think so. Brick and mortar, there has to be some structural changes in the economy uh, which prevents the roadside seller to stop selling fruits and vegetables. Only then could be a case for modern trade to sell uh, fresh uh, in a profitable manner. That's our view, especially in a, in a model like ours. Okay, thanks so much, Nandal, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Avi Mehta from Macware. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Neville. Uh, just wanted to, uh, you know, get your thoughts on the apparel segment. I mean, what exactly did we change? What is where are, you said 70 to 80 percent on that journey. So, what is left to be done? Would love to get your thoughts on that, please. I have, we have done whatever we've done for the current size of revenue, but we're imagining what we would be five years, ten years from now. And mm -hmm. apparel is a very, very, very talent-driven and an individual. Uh, the guy who's, or the lady who's running that specific category, how he or she thinks about what should be done. Uh, so from a team capability standpoint, the confluence of the synthesize, synthesizing between what DMART stands for, what the ethos of DMART is, and what apparel should be. It's not very easy. A category like apparel, for a grocery kind of a model, is very complicated, right? So, and and a lot of people who come from outside, um, their understanding of value retail, their understanding of deep discounting is, is I would say, very limited. So first, that buy-in itself is, is very, very challenging. Because every And this is a very talent 
individual driven kind of a business right everybody brings in their own personality to the category so it's not very easy to get that synthesis so is because you said that you wanted to focus on basics there so is that thought now no longer the case you still want to have some fashion but the the type of fashion is probably what has to be realigned i mean i just wanted to kind of better understand that what will you change that you are trying to do here philosophy remains the same basic 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 okay you can have you can be fashionable yet by being basic yeah when you say fashionable it's about being in trend but how do you ensure that your line your product line is not susceptible to the vagaries of change of trend at very short notice that's the whole idea okay okay fair enough uh, the second uh, level was on your comment that you know you do not expect salience to move back to the 26 to 28 percent levels for general merchandise and apparel uh, why this thought uh, and if that is the case does that change uh, how should we look at same store sales growth from a new category edition based uh, you know uptick that it has traditionally or earlier come I yeah, have commented on this earlier. I maintain that stand that whenever you open a new store, okay, mm-hmm. get people from a larger radius coming to your store. So uh, when you get uh, when you get that kind of a customer into the store, they end up buying a lot of non-FMC. But as the store matures, okay, the percentage of uh, households who begin to buy from you from a smaller radius significantly increases, and hence that. basically drive the intensity of the food and fmcg and grocery sales and this has been a secular trend for the last 20 years so it is just simply because of that it's a trend it's a secular trend and as we mature and we become larger and larger the the food and grocery and the low margin contribution will increase so we have to then figure out how should you run the model such that you deliver on your profits uh, uh, in line with the construct changing with in fact okay uh, but but uh, sorry i mean just to push back i thought focus on adding larger stores could have probably helped us drive maintain that feeling that that thought is not accurate that thought continues to be accurate because uh, we continue to believe in the fact that having larger stores if you ready for the opportunities of the future but at the same time i do not want to build in very high expectation that yes we will go back to 27 28% and hence there will be a bump in gross margins not really i'm just giving you a very realistic scenario of the future so we are getting ready for the opportunities that can emerge because of gdp going up and and people wanting to buy more and more horizontally in the high margin sector we are priming ourselves for that but will that definitely guarantee 28% or 28% contribution of game no i don't think so okay okay i i understood i understood and lastly if i may sorry i just want a quick comment spread you did point towards 1 1.5% odd impact very rough in your view uh is this more about the need to kind of start is this reflecting more discounting in your view or just that the consumer is now keeping less pantry how how should we look at this from the way, the way we are looking at it we uh, and this is through real experiments real uh, events that have happened any store which has very very high throughput right i mean it's uh, it's kind of overflowing at the brim Uh, i just need to open most stores around that cluster it's as simple as that so assuming i'm doing 20 crore a month on a particular store and it's like mm-hmm. it very high throughput store over square feet uh, and i open another store close by and uh, this 20 crore store drops down to 15 crore but that additional store again gives me an additional 20 crore right so that's the whole idea so can i add in more stores is is the solution to issues like this and we have done these uh, we we have done these uh, kind of uh, activities or whatever i mean by design we bought <coughs> during covid time we bought a new many new locations even in mumbai and this is the outcome that net of both the old and the new store it is value accretive for us so that's that's the way to do it 
notwithstanding the possibility that uh, are available in demand ready we do that too but it is not the or it is always i am keep saying brick and mortar and e-commerce is the way to go oh, uh, sorry nevil i was referring to the one one and a half percent as you said is uh, possible from the quick commerce perspective mm-hmm. and that's what i was trying to kind of understand that when you say there is a possible impact on from commerce you are simply saying because the consumer is reducing her inventory uh, how how are you looking at this impact that's what i was trying to understand the, the impact from our own uh, capacity that i i am clear on but this one i was trying to kind of better appreciate how do you look at this so like i said right stores which are um Uh, doing exceedingly high revenue per square feet its ability to grow at a rate of inflation gets a bit challenged okay that's the point i wanted to make and then at the other end you have uh, from a commercial standpoint quick commerce who is delivering excellent convenience okay hmm. almost zero friction and delivery at home so then the 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 top end discerning customer probably who shopping at demand may fall off so to that extent there could be a 50 bits to uh, 100 bits kind of change uh, in the growth rates for such stores that is the point of trying to make okay okay so you were referring from that consumer probably going away and that is the possibility and that would be a, okay got it sir. that's all from my side thank you very much sir and my observation and comments are only for this year so if something significantly changes during the year i will talk about it next year so this is my understanding of what's happening right now uh, okay okay so you're saying as on date if this scenario becomes either less favorable or more favorable for us it might kind of produce or any in- increase okay got it sir got it. thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra, J.P. Morgan Chase. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you know, my question is on uh, you know your expectations on gross margin profile uh, over the medium term. Uh, you know, you clearly mentioned uh, you know the mix uh, is going to probably be stable in you know with gross with general merchandise and apparel. I was just trying to understand, uh, you know, couple of uh, enablers of gross margins and your thoughts on that, uh, on the FMCG and food side. What was, uh, you know, would, uh, you know, your terms of trade with leading suppliers uh, in order to leverage the scale benefits? Uh, how does that play out? Uh, do you see, uh, you know, premiumization of, uh, you know, the FMCG and food portfolio within your mix? And the last uh, enabler could be, you know, the private label contribution. So if you could share some thoughts on you know how these three things could behave and in would they in any way uh, you know imply potential for gross margin improvement over the medium term? That's the first question. Thank you. Uh, hi, Latika. So broadly, I'll take the terms of trade and the branded FMCG question part of the question first. So this is this is all work in progress. The whole idea is the more and more revenue you deliver. the more and more contribution you deliver uh, from a business contribution to a fmcg company's business obviously your bargaining power improves now you have two ways to deal with it you your improvement in bargaining power means more gross margins or better value to consumers yeah so on that's the choice uh, as a retailer you have to take and we we do that right we decide okay how much of this has to go back to consumer and how much of it has to be retained so that is one way of looking at it uh, on private labels i have constantly made comments uh, which have have remained consistent and it continues to be the same it's it's a very very long uh, um, so journey uh, you have to give it a lot of time india is still a 2 and a half 3000 usd per capita income country private labels play out beautifully when um, you know at least the country that is 7 8000 kind of per capita so we have a long way to go from all these uh, standpoints and i continue to hold that position that uh, branded companies are very very competitive and it's not very easy to deliver a private label at equal to a better quality at significantly cheaper price see we want the product 
टू बी सिग्निफिकेंटली चीपर देन ब्रांडेड कंपनी प्रोडक्ट एट अ सिग्निफिकेंटली लार्ज डिस्काउंट ओनली देन डज इट रियली प्लेज अराउंड विद ईथ वॉट डी मार्ट स्टैंड फॉर यू वुड लाइक टू पुट द डी मार्ट नेम ऑन द प्रोडक्ट ओनली इफ इट स्टैंड फॉर दैट सो सो दैट्स वाई फ्रॉम दैट स्टैंड पॉइंट वी बिलीव दैट दिस इज गोन टेक अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम now uh, coming to the overall theme of things see whatever we do today 14% 15% gross margin we are going to play around that right so anything beyond that we are going to pass it on to the customer we don't want to retain it because of thing is on the basis of value delivering great value through high quality operational excellence and keeping cost low so that's the broad philosophy like for example the feel i'm getting from this question is more about margin my response to you is we are more a top line driven company and we believe that if we continue to remain relevant to the customer from a value standpoint margins um, roi all of that will follow it will come but the philosophy is to be very very relevant distinctly relevant differentially relevant to consumers consumers when they think about demand they think different okay that's the whole philosophy you capture the imagination of the customer from delivering great products at great value that's the philosophy of the business thanks uh, devil uh, the second bit was uh, you know a follow up on something you alluded to while answering the question on apparel you know on talent uh, just wanted to hear from you uh, you know any particular uh, you know changes or incremental talent that you've hired at category head levels on the technology side on your e-commerce operations anything you want to talk about or share with us uh, uh, you know on capability building side thank you see actually uh, it's a good question i think uh, we are grappling with two things okay one is that we are we are running an enterprise which in absolute terms is very very large so when you even when you talk about a 15% or a 20% cagr if you add that and look at that from a value term it's a very very large value right and this value is being delivered again from distributed points of sale it's a different different stores locations culture people all of that so it creates a lot of it there's an enormous uh, uh, what should i say management bandwidth requirement to just get this entire ship running in the right trajectory right direction and with the right relevant speed so we are thinking about what this company would be 10 years from now we are not talking about the next year and hence if you want to reach there in a nice way without too much of damage uh, or or bruises then what is the kind of talent uh, we need to have today in the next 2 years in the next 3 years next 5 years that's what we were thinking about it so if you ask me my team and i the top leadership is thinking about how we should imagine the quality of talent we should have that can take us to where we want to be 10 years from now so so moment you start questioning have i mean put the right question on the table then you have a very clear view about what you need to do from a talent standpoint i mean that's broadly the ethos i wanted to share with you sure thank you and all the best thanks thank you The next question is from the line of Vivek Maheshwari from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Neveland team. Uh, a few questions. So, first on the store addition, uh, you did mention about you know lumpy additions, uh, you know at some point. Uh, but when you look at additions internally, do you also think about it as percentage, or you typically look at it more like you know forty to sixty stores? How do you think about the additions on an annual basis? Like I said, for this year also we have we have projected 40, 45 stores. I mean, I, again I'm saying that I don't want you um, to project something very large in the immediate future. Um, but yeah, so but in the longer term, yes, we have to go at a rare run rate higher. If you remember in my last annual call also, I said that we are ready to even open 60 stores. So capability as of last year was we can even open 60 stores for for, for Aram. Yeah, so so you can take a range of 40 to 60 over the next three years. 
and a follow up to that neville and pardon me if it's a nice question but let's say in a in a in an economy where real estate is doing so well and there are you know there is a formalization what is the bottleneck when you are thinking about adding the store uh, you know i know you buy out the land and it is uh, you know substantial investment but in a cycle where real estate is doing so well what what can you just highlight why you know why it is lumpy why it is not as predictable is it the team issue is it the site issue can you just elaborate because i cannot predict which so we decide all these stores should whatever you decide to store open right we decide uh, we think okay all of them will open in these many timelines uh, but india being <laughs> india is a uh, lot of things don't happen on time and sometimes some locations surprise you they have they also happen ahead of time but that's more of a rare uh, phenomena um yeah but but that's how it is it it is it is unpredictable and i have commented on this multiple times over the last three to four years sure sure i i i recall that uh the other question is on uh, dmart ready what would be at a system level uh, neville what would be the average delivery time in case of let's say dmart ready wherever the customer opts for delivery so on home delivery we flesh out some data we we are now i think uh, by the way we ignore the time between 11 pm and 6 am in the morning we ignore this time we don't count that as time but i think around around 40 45% of our deliveries happen within 12 hours within 12 hours okay yeah, yeah. and okay. around 86 80 percent of our deliveries happen within 24 hours okay and then the balance 14% why it doesn't happen to us customers plan the date of delivery it's not that we can't do it but when we give them visibility on when do they want want their slots they purposefully pick up a date which is later because of which the balance 14% is after 24 hours got it okay okay and on the you know one one of the points again neville you mentioned about you know there is maybe one one and half percent impact and uh, because of qc etc but you know do you find yourself in a bit of although that's a conscious choice you have made but in a bit of a disadvantageous position simply because you don't have a customer data so let's say if i'm a shopper at dmart and i move to qc you will never come to know given that you don't have you know the intelligence in terms of my what you know how many times i'm coming to you to your store do you think there is a you may need to rethink on the data strategy surely because the competition is coming from you know from uh, unknown quarters also now or you think that you are happy working with the aggregates as has been your strategy for such a long time yeah it's a it's a good question uh, vivek uh, but my counter point of view is always even internally when some of the same questions are asked by my team to me i say that look the only one single indicator that probably Uh, we are blindfolded or refuse to accept what is obvious is if my sales or my profits is telling me something right negative so if my sales are great my customers are talking nice about me uh, my my model is working perfectly fine my margins are intact my ssg growths are intact then why should i change number one number two specifically to answer your question on the qc side qc is convenience qc is full price it is completely opposite to what dmart stands for dmart is value yeah dmart is i would say a little inconvenient or i'm probably say a little uh, a little also probably not doing justice it is a bit inconvenient right but it delivers great value uh, so so that's it so we would like to rather play on the positioning of value and then create something in the digital space and i think when you think like that see demand always believe in doing something which is very difficult for others to follow yeah you build dna that everybody can see what you're doing but they can't do it i mean and that is our pursuit the model that we try to build got it and as a follow up to that question and that would be my last one neville you know from a top down when you look at as the as the you know as the head of the organization or the ceo there are let's say you know for argument sake there are two verticals that you have right one which is dmart and the other is dmart ready i know there are a few more beyond that 
uh, one has a lot of data, right? DMART ready. Uh, whereas the other one is, is working on aggregates. Do you find the DMART data, uh, ready data to be rich? Are you able to do, uh, do you do a lot of analysis on that? Is that a precursor for you to, uh, you know, if, if the data is rich, if you have a lot of insights, is that a precursor to also think about them, they, that, you know, uh, or, or implement that in DMART? Uh, so can you just talk about what is your view on all the data that you collect at DMART ready level? Uh, I think I'll give this uh, opportunity to for Vikram, who heads uh, ready for us to respond. Um, Vikram, can you take this question? Yeah, sure. <coughs> That's Vivek, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll So the question is around how we are leveraging data, right? Is that right? That is right, and and you know, so one part is you know, how are you lever? What all are you doing with that data? Uh, number one and number two, from a DMART uh, ready, is there a case? You know, if there is something good that you are doing with that data, is there a is there a case to think about it in case of DMART based business itself? Yeah, sure. I'll, the latter part, I'd let uh, you know Neville uh, address. But uh, on the data part, uh, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of uh, data that we generate on, a, on every second basis. I know within the business, and we use a lot of that data to sort of uh, you know improve uh, our own you know input metrics, right? There are tons of things that happen uh, for us to be able to fulfill an order that a customer places, right? So you may also have seen that you know we are not uh, you know super big into aggressive marketing or advertising, right? So all of that data that we are generating, we are using to improve our internal uh, metrics. So there is a lot of data that we generate, not just on customers, but also on how we are uh, operating. And uh, will that be useful for, uh, you know, for DMART? Uh, uh, you know, by, by all means. But as Neville mentioned, there's a, there are tons of things that we're already doing, right? You know, we are working on making sure that the value proposition is right for the customer. What else do you really work on? Right? As, as, as long as we know that the stores are working at the most uh, efficient levels, and uh, you know the input metrics are you know showing uh, you know the right uh, you know directional trajectory. Um, you know there's, there's not you know too much else that you can really you know do with uh, uh, data, and we use that data in a sensible manner. I'm not suggesting that you know data is useless or anything like that. It's just that we are not big into using data to manipulate uh, customers uh, you know behavior uh, you know with a short term outlook. Does it make sense? Okay, sure. I like the word uh, that you've used. And Neville, any thoughts on from this perspective to you know the the offline stores? Yeah. So integrating information uh, of the online space for the offline uh, store. I think I'll I'll tell you only one very clear insight, Vivek, uh, which I think I've alluded to uh, not last year, but I think last to last year. I think the digital space uh, data just fascinates you in terms of what all they can do which we cannot. I think uh, there are some very powerful elements of what online space can do which we cannot, which is the cost of experimentation and the uh, uh, long tail item selling capability. I think that is something that brick and mortar, at least a DMART <laughs> brick and mortar is trying to do. Yeah, so, so that's. And I think that's where the compliment is also there, that it's fascinating. I mean, there are so many things uh, where, you know, actually they are the bigger brothers. Yeah, and not us, right? So so I think, uh, so it's very humbling. Uh, very humbling what uh, digital can tell you, teach you at very short notice. And, and I think from that standpoint, we're leveraging the information and the learning. Uh, so, yeah, so that's it. That's, that's my point of view on, on the digital side. Ready, ready business. Got it, got it. Thank you, and wishing you and your team all the very best, Neville. Thanks, thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sheila Rathi from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Um, hi, Neville. Uh, my first question was to do with your opening remark, Neville, that, you know, um, that since the second half of last year, we are seeing a smart recovery in the GME uh, portfolio. So just more, and you also said that, you know, that uh, we will maintain the current levels of 23% and not going back to 27, 28%. Now, how should we understand this uh, from, you know, going forward perspective that uh, where will we uh, improvement get reflected in terms of uh, you know the company's PNL going ahead. So that 
that's what I keep saying. Hi, Sheila, by the way. Uh, sorry. Uh, so I keep saying this. I, I don't know what, what is the aspiration level in the analyst community on gross margin, but we've been towering between 14 and 15, or 14 and 15 and a half percent. And that's where it's going to be. Uh, so whether it's GMAs, whatever it is, or whatever it could be, and the way we look at it is what is the blended average gross margin going to be. And uh, this is business. I really cannot predict beyond a point. I mean, there is a range within, within which we can say, okay, fine, this is where we're going to be. But I can't give you a finite number. And most importantly, business is dynamic. Competition uh, should be factored in multiple other things, right? So I really can't give you a straight answer. But I think 14 and a half, 15, 15 and a half, those are the kind of ranges we play in. Yeah. You have to look at the blended gross margin. Uh, actually, my uh, question was not to do with the margins, actually. My question was, if GMA is coming back, the shares are maintained at, you know, a 23% level, uh, will it get reflected in the top line growth then? Uh, I mean, how should we capture it, uh, apart from your commentary that GMA is coming back? Uh, will there be a way to capture it? Because like you're saying, margins will be maintained. Uh, it will get more and more challenging for us to analyze that uh, in terms of share. I can't. I I can't give you any projections on what our growth rates are going to be, number of stores that we are going to add, gross margins going to be. I can't give you that. I, I, I might, I, it's difficult. I can't, I can't tell you that. It's not that I have information I'm not sharing with you, but I, I can't crystal ball and, and give you a finite number there. I'll give you color. I'll give you a qualitative understanding of where we are trending. Fair point. Uh, second point again is that you know we have you mentioned for uh, e-commerce that consciously we are making a decision not to grow very fast. But are there any areas you know, in the last few years where we think that we should uh, you know speed up in terms of uh, growth going ahead? Uh, obviously, store expansion is something you have already called out. Uh, but, you know, when you think about formats like Minimax, is there an opportunity for us to take that up? We added six stores this year. Uh, but, you know, how does that fit into uh, into our growth strategy? So, I think from the e-commerce standpoint, and this is, again, a very uh, divergent uh, call I'm making from what I actually thought would be uh, the way e-commerce would be. Uh, we are seeing that the home delivery model is a better model. So it's exactly opposite of what we used to, at least I used to say earlier, because the numbers prove it. Um, and uh, so home delivery in large town is the way to go. Yeah, so that's the broad point of view I'll try to make. And hence, whatever it, it uh, needs to, whatever it takes to build fulfillment centers in large towns quickly, as quickly as possible, so that we are able to deliver in at least 12 hours. I mean, that's the aspiration. Um, so, so, so primarily growing faster than what we are doing right now in large towns, in demand ready is the way to go. And on mini max? It's still experimentation. I think we feel that not yet ready. Market is not yet ready for that uh, model. And. In the past, you have mentioned the share of home delivery used to be 50 percent. Uh, how does how has that number tended now? Had I said 50 percent? More or less similar. That is what you had mentioned in the past, couple of years ago. So now it's better. Whatever was in the past is getting better and better. See, what is happening is the there is a sharper segmentation in the consumer's mind. The consumer says, "Look, if you want." me to take all the effort and come to a store, then I want I want great value. And that's what DMART stands for. And um, there's another customer who says, great, DMART is giving me great value, but it's also charging me for home delivery. So if you're giving uh, me convenience, I might as well take the convenience wholeheartedly and get the product delivered at, at home. So there's a clear, clear segmentation happening in the consumer's mind. And the pickup point is sitting somewhere in between. So it's a bit fuddy-duddy, right? It's neither here, neither there. And hence, you know, the, gravi the gravitational force is tilting either to the store or to home delivery. So we will have to relook at our DMAT ready stores. Is that what you are uh, coming to? Uh, so uh, if you've seen the data, we have, we have recalibrated, consolidated, right? We've shut a lot of pickup points. It's primarily to kind of um, uh, rework on the, on the whole operating model on the ready side. 
Just one final question. Uh, did we saw some advertising on, you know, first three orders free on DMART ready. Uh, was there a tactical call in terms of getting more customers or, and uh, what was the kind of success we saw around it? I'll ask Vikram to respond to that. We are seeing some good, uh, you know, traction there uh, on that uh, on that promotion. So the idea here is to let customers, uh, you know, sample our service, and uh, our data has suggested that people who you know use our service for uh, you know two or three times tend to stick with us because they really grok the value, uh, you know, that we are providing. And so that's something that we've started doing a few months ago, and it's starting to show some really good results. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Aditya Soman from CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so two questions. Uh, one, uh, I mean, just mathematically, as your uh, cash flow operations increases, and especially as you're opening more stores in smaller towns, uh, would the number of stores just mathematically go up because you have more cash available to open stores, given that you typically would match uh, store at capex and, and cash flow operations? Yes. Yes. Opportunity to open more will increase definitely. Right. And the other thing is, I mean, just to add to this, right, I mean, your cluster, I mean, the area of the cluster also keeps widening, right? So when you open a, within a cluster, even that cluster itself is widening. So in theory, I mean, there is no reason why, uh, I mean, I, I know you've said 40 to 60 starts over two to three years, but uh, in theory, that number should keep going up uh, as your, uh, as your one, as your revenues and cash flows improve, and second, as your cluster size increases, right? Absolutely. Okay. So I was just reflecting back on all my comments over the last seven, eight years, just reading through all of them. If you remember post IPO, I should talk about 10 to 15 stores. Yeah. So we moved from there to 40 to 60 stores. So obviously it goes up, right? It will, it has to. <coughs> so we, our entire effort is in that direction. Very clear. And secondly, I mean, just on private uh, brands, right? I mean, uh, I just want to break this question up a little bit. So one, you have these uh, Vmart Premier products, which uh, I can sort of reduce from sales of Align Retail, which would be somewhere between five to six percent of sales. Uh, and then you have all these branded products that you are now launching. Uh, uh, at last count, I found about 130 of them, but maybe there's more. Uh, and, and then there is uh, general merchandise that you pack. Uh, so can you give us a rough sense of what the contribution of each of these uh, would be overall? We don't disclose it. Uh, we don't disclose those numbers. But uh, fair. To, I mean, the DMART premium stuff. I can like it, uh, that would be fair, right? That uh, the aligned retail numbers would be a good way to reduce that. Mm, yes, partly. Yes. Okay. And the other part of the business would it be at least similar size, larger size? Any sense on that? No, I'll 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 prefer not to comment on that. Okay. I, then maybe just, I mean, even if not numerically, right? I mean, I, I see that the number of products uh, has been increasing and, and maybe accelerating in the last uh, year or so. Would that uh, be a fair assumption? So I'll give you, uh, I'll give you um, uh, a direction about how to look at this. Right? Uh, you will get a sense of how well we are doing in private labels simply based on the PKD. That's it. That's the way to look at it. If the shelf is lying, if the product is lying on shelf for too long, that means the category is not doing well. It's as simple as that. So make yeah. a call based on that. Yeah. That's very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Garima Mishra from Kotak. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Neville, first question, uh, you know, uh, previous call you had mentioned that the proportion of overall store count uh, located in cities with population of more than 1 million had uh, declined to 60% in FY23 from a larger number earlier. So was this a trend you witnessed in FY24 as well, and maybe this is a trend to be witnessed in the future also? Yeah, so um, I remember last uh, analyst call, I kind of jumbled up a lot of numbers. So we made, we ensured the homework was better this time. 
So uh, we've got one percent better in less than five lakh uh, uh, town population. We were at twenty eight percent of the store cohort. Um, in FY23, it's become 29%. So we have 29% of a store cohort in less than 5 lakh towns. In financial year 2020, that number was 21%. Okay. So in five years, uh, we've got an 8% increase uh, in store count in this pop data. Uh, I, I hope you're getting it, Garima. Huh? So, so from 21% of the store cohort in financial year 2020, we were at 28% last year, this year we are at 29%. So 29% of our stores are in 5 lakhs or lower top strata towns. Understood. That is clear. Second, you know, if you just look at uh, that uh, slide on uh, store addition, and while, of course, a lot of stores do go back into clusters where you're already present, you do keep adding stores in newer uh, areas as well, let's say Rajasthan, NCR, et cetera. So for uh, specifically some of these stores, are these stores tracking metrics that are similar to those in your core geographies, let's say, of Maharashtra, Gujarat, et cetera? Yeah, sorry, ma. broadly, yes. Broadly, everything is in line. We, there is no diver, major divergence. Uh, uh, so younger the um, uh, vintage, uh, the financial metrics will be relatively lesser than uh, the balance cohort. But the, the newer store cohort trend line has been the same for the, for the last 10 to 15 years. So everything under control. Okay, okay, understood. And irrespective of regions, yeah. So that's the beauty about our model. This what is the beautiful thing about our model is whether it's North India, South India, West India, East, we're still not there. Uh, from a metric standpoint, financial standpoint, we are doing fine. And that's why the model cuts across all SEC, ethnicity, culture, everything. And that's the beauty. Understood. Uh, that's uh, good to know. Um, uh, one question, I will. Uh, in the 1Q FY25 results release, you did mention that some of your OPEX had gone up due to efforts on improving service levels and building capabilities for the future. So, could you explain what exactly, which line items are you referring to here? So, so broadly, two things are happening. I think uh, we've been all talking about product inflation, but I think uh, at the lower level, wage inflation is also going up rapidly. Okay, that's one thing is very, very clearly um, being observed. The second thing is um, we are also working on building our capabilities, talent, all of that from a perspective of a little bit more longer thinking in terms of, like I just answered in the previous question, that what will this company be 10 years from now? Or what should it be like? And hence, what is the kind of talent ecosystem we need to build and start thinking about from today? And uh, I think uh, this thought uh, uh, had emerged a year and a half, two years back, and we were in the journey of building those capabilities over the last one year. So yeah, so 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 it's a combination of both of these. Got it. So if I hear you right, this essentially refers mostly to people and talent Absolutely. within the Absolutely. organization. Absolutely. Got it. Last question from me. Um, this is on DMART Ready. So Mumbai is, I think, your oldest city in terms of numbers of years uh, present. So do you think at least in Mumbai or let's say MMR to be specific, you're present in pretty much all PIN codes that you would want to be present in? Uh, this is Vikram. Uh, yes, uh, we are present in uh, all but a uh, couple of uh, PIN codes which are actually not very serviceable. But yeah, MMR, uh, Mumbai Metropolitan Region, we are fully covered. Got it. Uh, thanks, Neville. Thanks, Vikram, for answering my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Sachdeva from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. Take, uh, thank you so much for taking my question. So, hi, Neville. I have a question on. Uh, I have two questions. One on DMART Ready. Uh, so, uh, just it's a very basic question. Is DMART Ready consumer seeking convenience at the margin or more value? Basically, you know where I'm getting at is because there is a clear. You also mentioned there's a convenience pie, which is you know consumer is trying to sort of get its service as willing to pay for it. Uh, what my question is, in the last 
four five years with build demand ready which is clearly showing that the bidder margin is still minus 2 to minus 3% so operating model even if some scale up has happened profitability is still elusive uh, at is there a opportunity for price discrimination here between physical store to you know online and if it is profitable and and you know stands on its own merit then your ambition to grow faster may change as well i mean what i'm trying to ask is that is it the limitation because you want to value but convenience is a conflict uh, how do we think about this uh, why not pursue that as you know as a convenience opportunity which can price discriminate and you get more profits out of it and hence can grow faster and and can service more customers who want that convenience i just want to your thought on that so the thought is very clear i mean we we just because it's digital uh, we, hmm. we are not saying it will be convenience our positioning will be on value so sure. uh, we are very clear because in the consumer's mind the demand stands for value we want to maintain that we don't want to create dissonance in the in the customer's mind it's not good the demand stands for value the idea is how do we build an operating model that in spite of delivering at home uh, can you uh, bring that value proposition uh, uh, saliency in the consumer's mind that's the whole idea so so whatever it takes to do that i think uh, that's what we'll focus on so what will what need to change that this a bit the margin starts to move in a positive direction I don't have a point of view there. I can only simply we we simply feel very delighted and excited that we've reached here, uh, okay. uh, in such a short period of time, uh, and with the kind of EBITDA losses that you just mentioned, I hmm. think it's promising. Uh, and you have to give these things time. See, the best part is you have a brick and mortar business who's delivering great profits, is able to fund. And um, uh, with such uh, low losses, I think. Uh, we can uh, the business the larger business can afford to give it more time to make it uh, profitable and to stand on its own feet uh, over a period of time got it no fair enough uh, thanks so much it just just a last bit on this is on dmart ready is what's the ticket size of dmart ready order if i may ask we don't disclose those numbers okay 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 uh, fair enough no no worries on dmart i uh, completely understand Uh, my second question uh, you know on on the uh, general merchandise i don't know whether this uh, estimate is correct but correct me if i'm wrong um, i think the for, for the full year uh, the revenue mix was 22.37 and in the first half of fi24 this mix was 23.21 which would imply that this mix actually deteriorated to 21.6 in the second half um, of general merchandise which seems like a bit of a deterioration rather than an improvement and while you say q1 has become better how do we reconcile that has the numbers in q1 is substantially better than 21.6 which was in, in the second half or is this assessment wrong uh, correct me if i'm reading this incorrectly how are you comparing it how are you comparing q1 uh, no i'm just saying that for the full year that number was 22.37 okay So, if I take that number, twenty-two point three seven, you get a certain number in the revenue mix, taking the four quarters, right? And when you take first half, first half was twenty-three point two one. Where did you get that first? First, okay, okay, sorry, yeah, okay. So, so implicitly, the second half become twenty-one point six. Correct. So, which seems like a marked deterioration rather than an improvement, while you say the second half was quite good and Q one seems quite better as well. Uh, it seems to me that there was still deterioration happening in the second half of the revenue mix. So I okay, uh, I've not done the numbers the way you've done, but I've got the sense of what you're trying to say. My retort or response to that is that first half, uh, first quarter is actually from a revenue mix standpoint the best. Okay. And then is the Diwali quarter. Okay. Then is Q2. Okay. And the worst is Q4. the match quarter sure the blending of that with a reasonable confidence i can say that uh, this financial year will be equal to us better than fy24 gma contribution 
Got it, got it. And it is because the merchandise apparel is sort of bottomed out and looking like a little bit better and other things. Is there an opportunity to shape the general merchandise mix non-apparel basis as well or are you is is still stable and nothing really much can change here? So the way to look at it, uh, Amit, is uh, apparel we believe we can go back to the older days of uh, contribution which was, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, pre-COVID. We see, uh, so that's one part. The other part is we see an opportunity in GM, general merchandise, to be a larger opportunity in the long term. So for us, the general merchandise opportunity is a larger opportunity. And hmm. apparel is more defensive. We can get back to where we should be. But are we very, very optimistic about apparel? As much as we are about GM, no. GM salience to our model is better than apparel salience to our model. Got it. Now, without seeking any guidance, because I think one of the things that was earlier asked as well, that if, say, GMA, uh, general merchandise starts to do at least better, uh, one would expect that uh, revenue growth should accelerate in, in the you know, rest remaining off the year. I mean, uh, without seeking guidance, but do you feel a little confident that um, we are on that trajectory that revenue growth uh, should accelerate as well over FY24, uh, given the network rollout and given the uh, other problems are getting fixed? Because we saw something like 18 odd kind of percent of numbers uh, in, in the, you know, first four quarters. On an average, but do you see that number should be better as well uh, in in um, FI25? That the growth trajectory is it without see, seeking any guidance, but uh, the way things are moving. What's your sense? I would say the other way around, and uh, I would be a little conservative on the guidance uh, from that standpoint. Rather than being optimistic, I would say that it gets it is getting more and more challenging to maintain a 15 to 20 percent cashier growth rate. If I if I continue to grow at only 40 stores per annum, the real driver of CAGR growth rate is to accelerated store additions. Sure. Yeah. So that's the way to look at it, and we don't look at oh because my GMA contribution went up, and that should be the driver of revenue growth. Absolutely not. The driver Got of it. revenue growth is store additions. Understood. That's that's very clear, Neville. And and uh, on the store addition, that since we are at it, uh, do you, like last two quarters, the average area that we roughly calculate is still forty around forty thousand now, which was way way high in twenty two or something like that. Is it now the right template of forty thousand uh, kind of store as a is a, a reasonable way to sort of see the store sizes or is it quite variable still? Very variable, I mean, we don't look at it like that. I've repeatedly said that. Uh, mm. When you're in the model that we have, I mean, whatever land is available, what sizing we construct, all of that, right? It is a broad range of claims. Sure. But like we said, historically, we were at 30, 35,000. Obviously, we see opportunity in the store size being larger, for sure. But mm. always a range. Don't go by the 5 10% vagaries of average store size every year. Got it, got it, got it. No, fair enough. Thank you so much, Neville, and thank you so much for answering my question. Pleasure. Pleasure talking to you, Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Harish Bihani from Kotak Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Neville and team. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, Harish. Harish. Hi, hi. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so, Again, my question is on the store addition. Uh, if I look at your last few years conversation, uh, I, even in the last conference call, you clearly mentioned that you test your team yourself on a 15% number. Uh, but when we look at this number for last few years, uh, uh, it's trending below the 15% number. Uh, now, we were presuming that the 15% number should at least start coming through from fiscal 25, given that there would be backlog of uh, some delays, etc., in fiscal 24, that should come through. But uh, basis the initial conversation that we had so far, it seems like we'll be again be closer to 40-45. Uh, so this is a little perplexing to me. Uh, and uh, you mentioned that there'll be delays, India factor, delays happen. 
बट एटलीस्ट देर शुड बी अ पॉइंट ऑफ ब्रेक आउट इट्स नॉट हैपनिंग एज फॉर लास्ट फ्यू ईयर स्पेशली लास्ट ईयर वॉज ओके देर वॉज इशूज लास्ट ईयर बट एटलीस्ट दिस ईयर वी शुड है थिंग्स इम्प्रूविंग ऑन दैट स्टोर काउंट नंबर and we should be doing a say a 55 this year 65 next year and 75 next year ballpark to be able to do a 15% kagar number that you're talking about i take that feedback harish and 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 the only thing i'll tell you is we're trying our best yeah i completely feel and sense the uh, point you're trying to make uh, but yes uh, but but we'll try we'll try our best to do what what's needed for the uh, for the health of the business and the growth of the business but point taken i i have no defense on that standpoint that you have that's that is also our aspiration um so yeah but uh, we'll try we'll try to do our best on that front sure and like in like in the april business uh, where you clearly mentioned that there were internal issues and we are working on that and things should improve Uh, in this case how much of this is internal and how much of this is external i've answered i've answered repeatedly on this question i understand the mood that uh, your community has on uh, um, inorganic growth top line revenue growth and and the drivers of it which is primarily store opening uh, but uh, it, it the story is the same it's both internal external everything and uh, but uh, no i meant the store opening is it is it uh, there are internal bottlenecks which again we had presumed that you would have made the changes in the last few years and you would have seen a ramp up over there at least to do a 200 stores in the next 3 years you need to have a visibility today to do a 200 stores right yes you are absolutely right so i think uh, i spoke uh, a lot about it in the last analyst meet and uh, maybe not this year but the year after that i hope that we will have a better rate of store opening uh, additions like an answer this, okay maybe uh, this, like an answer this is an internal bottleneck uh, never or this is uh, there are some external challenges land prices have shot up you're not getting to the right store location uh, because you still buying 90% of what you uh, the stores that you need to build up it is multiple things internal external everything but we are working on it but external is also a factor uh, let me put it this way who else does what we do in the country a country of 140 crore people in a business like retail at this scale who else does what we do nobody or some people do in parts it's tough it's extremely extremely tough i've been saying this but not in the next year just to give a color to what this model is and we like to do things which are difficult right especially when it's difficult for others to do so but i'm here okay even if i'm adding 40 or 50 stores per year it's it's great it's good can it be better of course it can be better is it testing our uh, capability of course not we can do this significantly better than this okay uh, but you'll see i keep saying this general basis are past you have data for the last 7 years probably even 3 to 4 years prior to ipo you see the trajectory of store additions and then you judge us but i will not give you very precise uh, numbers on what it will be in the future but point taken we are all working hard on that sure sure thanks so much take care yeah, thank you The next question is from the line of Akshay from Fidelity. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Two questions from my side. One was just around the business model. Uh, when we see value retailing landscape globally, we've seen global peers try different experiments. Uh, I don't know if you have thoughts on, you know, whether something like Costco. can be done in india by somebody like you that that's one second is you know as you, know, you alluded that in smaller towns and cities uh, bima is still a destination people go and shop you get a lot of footfall uh, and you lo- you own the land around it i don't know if there is you know thought to monetize that footfall through different means uh, at the top of my head you know could food or some entertainment something to that effect can be done or you 
see yourself largely sticking to to value retailing uh, that's the first question i'll let you answer and then ask my second one so it's two questions in one so i'll answer it as two questions one is you said costco and can we do something like costco in india i have um, uh, replied to this in uh, multiple forums that uh, retail is very intrinsic to the culture history um, many other soft aspects of a particular country and you cannot uh, usually parachute in a model that has worked somewhere else in another country very easily <laughs> okay specifically when it comes to value retail or grocery retail i have no comment on the other types of retail I mean, like for example, let's look at luxury retail, right? Everything, the playbook is exactly the same, format, assortment, all of that. So I'm not commenting on those kind of more formats. But when I talk about food, you know, basic items, all of that, a lot of other nuances that that matter, and hence local retailers automatically get an advantage over an MNC kind of a retailer. And yeah, so that's one thing I'd like to respond to about the relevance of a Costco model in India. So that's the way we think about it. second thing is you said about monetizing other aspects because of the strength of a footfall yes yeah. our very clear view on that is very very clear and in fact it's also very very clearly my personal view that the moment you start diverting your focus from your core business uh, it's it's not a good sign i think just the dmart model has got such a humongous multi decadal opportunity just by doing this and you succeed in this only when you have that razor sharp focus because the low margin high efficiency high employee connect kind of a business so if you try to distract yourself from focusing on these aspects into other things uh, it will uh, diminish value for the entire business especially when the opportunity is so large <coughs> so i think focusing just on doing demand is the way to go okay um i think we um you know you made your views clear on private label and you feel that uh, you know existing brands do a better job at it so until unless you don't you can't do it at a at a right price there's no point doing it uh, just as an extension to that question you know when we go visit the stores now we we see you know a lot of uh, new brands b2c brands on the shelf uh just wanted to get your philosophy that is this something that you experiment or do to to you know is this trying to maximize your gross margin subscribe or is this something that you typically see pull for and and hence that finds itself uh, on the shelf of of demand it's only pull 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 it's just customer preference you only focus on that as a number one priority so did you see brands who become reasonably large and now want to have the next level of growth they come to us and that's the right approach people should come to dmart only when when a 10 crore company wants to become a 100 crore company a company who's at 0 1 crore if it comes to dmart the, the chances of success are going to be very very limited okay thank you so much yeah. thank you The next question is from the line of Percy Pathanki from IIFN. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, firstly, couple of questions from the annual report. So I see that uh, capital commitments have gone up to about three thousand six hundred crore versus two thousand one hundred crore earlier. So that's a very large increase. Does this have any bearing on the number of stores that will come up in the next uh, few quarter? And if not, then what does this number really signify? That's one uh, part of the question. The other part is if I look at your annual report and look at the amount you have paid for the land per square feet. of stores added in this year that is about 7300 rupees per square feet of land cost for the 40 stores added this year versus a 4600 rupees per square feet for the 40 stores added last year so there is a significant inflation in land cost so is this on account of a change in the city mix where you have opened up more in metros or something like that or this is just a pure inflation in the land so these are the two relating to the annual report and then i'll probably have uh, one on uh, something else yeah thank you 
firstly, that's not the way to look at it. Whatever limited, I'm not a finance guy, limited understanding I have, and Nilavi is also with me, he'll add on to any points I have missed. The way I understand the balance sheet is that whenever you buy land, even if though it's not operational for the store, okay, it goes into your fixed asset. It doesn't go into CWIP. So the entire land aggregation addition that happens year on year could be for stores which are not only opening in that year, but also in the next few years. Got it, got it. So, so it's the wrong way to look at it, what you're saying got is not so, so that's one, but that's only one part of the answer. The second part of the answer is yes, if I take a three year, five year period, then land prices have definitely gone up. So whatever we've paid for land, say in Bombay or Bangalore, Bombay sorry is an exception, I'll come to Bombay separately. But if I take a Bangalore or Hyderabad or many of the small towns also, the price at which we used to buy land maybe five, seven years back will be what I buy today or the price at which I bought 10 years back to what I'm buying today, of course there is a huge level of inflation in land. Yeah, so you have to look at it from that standpoint. So maybe if I have a 10 year, 10 year balance sheet data and I lump three years together and then added by three years of store, number of store count and then derive some mathematical Excel working, that will be more accurate than doing an annual number. So that's your, some blending will happen there. Yeah. Understood, understood. And the capital commitment? Yeah. Sorry? Capital commitments, 2,100 crore versus 3,600 crore YOI? So capital commitment per se is an outcome of the open purchase orders at the end of the year. So it depends on how many purchase orders are in various stages of progress. So there could be a building we just started constructing in the month of, say, March, right? So the entire uh, cost of the purchase order opened is backloaded. And hence we will see a, and it's a balance sheet figure, right? It's a position at a, end, at a point in time, not representative of uh, the actual number. So it depends on when you take this slide. If I have a store which is large and there's a capital commitment of say 20 crores in that store, so that will inflate the number. But it's a, it's a fair indication of the likely construction cost that we are uh, budgeting to incur over the next two, three years. Okay, so does this in any way sort of, I mean, the, the fact that it is inflated so much on a YOI basis, is it a right conclusion to say that the number of store openings will also sort of inflate uh, accordingly over the next one, one and a half years or no? Uh, it's a mix, I would say. It's yes and no. So it's a question of the cost of construction in a particular city, the size of the store we are planning to open, the number of lifts we have in a particular store and stuff like that. Understood. It's not very linear. Understood, understood. My next question is on uh, uh, your uh, e-commerce uh, venture. Uh, so just first of all, as a hygiene, uh, uh, sort of just wanted to see if you could share a couple of numbers. That is the number of uh, DMART stores end of FI23 as well as end of FI24. Is it possible to share that? You're talking about DMART ready or DMART? Yeah, DMART ready, sorry, not DMART. DMART ready is what I'm talking about. So, you're talking about the pickup points, is it? Uh, yeah, the, the number of stores, yeah, that is the, the, the smaller sort of stores that you have of DMART ready, which we see in the uh, road sometimes. Uh, that, that would be the pickup as well as the delivery points, right? So, approximately, uh, we've, we've shut down around 200 uh, locations. Uh, 230. Okay. But see, we had 573 last year. There are 341 this year. We shut down 232. So has the area of uh, operations that you can service also come down accordingly? No, no. So this was to improve operating leverage. So earlier suppose it was a three, say maybe a one kilometer or one and a half kilometer radius kind of uh, thing. Uh, probably it, it uh, reduced. So maybe we reduce it to, I mean increase the range. Maybe now you'll find one pickup point, maybe at a three kilometer kind of a range or a four kilometer range. It was to to kick off or improve the operating leverage of the pickup point. Understood, understood. And uh, lastly, on your brick and mortar business, uh, uh, I got it uh, uh, in the previous discussions that basically you want to maintain a particular margin and any kind of uh, uh, efficiencies you have, you will pass it on to the consumer to become more competitive. So I just wanted to understand if you have any more drivers uh, 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 lined up, uh, which can increase your uh, discount versus MRP versus what it stands today. So I think one or two years ago, you had done 
this direct delivery and stuff like that which had given you 100 basis points are there any other drivers uh, you see which can increase your discount to mrp versus what it stands today yeah it is it is a same playbook it is about private labels it is about gma contribution you know things like that it's about your overall top line uh, growth rate and hence how important you become for your suppliers in the branded space so it's all three so any kind of rough guesstimate you can give that over the next 2 to 3 years how much more uh, you can sort of increase the discount versus what it is today 200 basis points 100 basis points any rough guesstimate on this cannot cannot okay okay sir that's all from me thanks and all the best thanks thank you the next question is from the line of amnish agarwal from prabhudas leeladhar private limited please go ahead Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. sir. Yeah. So, uh, my name is. So, my questions are uh, essentially on DMAT ready. Uh, you see, now, as you said, we have shut the number of pickup points. So, first of all, what is now the ratio of your delivery, home delivery versus pickup? And if I look at, say, in the slightly longer term, as you also said that. there are consumers who want convenience and there are consumers who want you can say your pricing now if i look at the quick commerce players as they gain scale and they grow in size maybe their terms of trade with buyers also improve over a period of time so on this count where does demart ready stands with with other other players in the online space so It's a good question. Obviously, uh, when any supplier's contribution increases or sales increase, their bargaining power will also increase. We are, we are, uh, uh, you know, cognizant of that. But at the same time, what we believe in a business like retail, which is very process, you don't have any IP. It's all about you know who does it better. When we crunch the numbers at an operating uh principal level from a cost level i think we have a huge huge advantage compared to uh quick commerce from a cost of operation standpoint but i think where they have an edge over us is the gross margin their ability to earn gross margin is significantly better than us because they operate on the principle of convenience so that's the way to look at it so to to, to that point i think eventually who is going to win in the market is the question to ask Yeah. So our view is both will coexist. And there is a set of customers who wants delivery in 15 minutes, 20 minutes. They don't mind paying the premium, and uh, it's a lovely model uh, from that standpoint. And uh, very relevant for a country like India, especially large towns. Infra is a bit tricky for people to reach from point A to point B is a bit challenging. So from that standpoint, uh, people who who value uh, time and convenience and comfort. Uh, this business, this e-commerce business is fantastic. It will do well. At the same time, there is a set of customers who deeply appreciate value. So, for example, if they have a 10,000 or a 15,000 budget on grocery, uh, if there's an opportunity to say, hey, you know what, 50% or 60% of that, uh, I don't need to have it quickly, but uh, saving a thousand bucks uh, on that makes a lot of sense to me. And she will, and we believe. as she will come to us for that now what we also believe is considering all things equal if competition also tries to play the value game um, i think uh, in the long run we will do better at that job so that's that's the whole thinking and we will also try to take a decent share of that even that discerning customers uh, uh, wallet share so that's the way to look at it so for example you'll have different uh, customers in different sec classes the very premium sec class will probably buy less from dmart but the idea is i mean people will buy through multiple formats and dmart will try to be one of those for every customer of a city that's the whole idea and the digital strategy is also that that we decide to get into this to play in that wallet share and not say that i will only do this i will only address this this customer segment The idea is that is there an opportunity to service even the discerning customer and take a part of that wallet share from the customer? And over time, we believe that customers will gravitate towards DMART also. That's the thought. 
Okay, so that's that's very helpful. And Nagin, now with 341 of our pickup points, and I believe each one of them would be say maybe 200 to 200 odd square feet. So have you ever thought of that? Can you convert those pickup points into something like a your dark store or mini dark store, and also try to participate in the e-commerce a bit? No. 200 square feet is not good enough to run a dark store. The dark store, um, I think, needs at least five to 7,000 square feet to even do decent justice to the customer basket. So it can't work. 200 square feet can't work. Okay, understood. And like last year, we just added one more city in DMART ready. So are we done with the near term or you will see again this expansion in the number of cities? I want to comment on that because the next we are going to meet is one year later and 12 months is a long time in digital commerce. So we will play by the year. We'll see how things go over the next 12 months and then decide what we need to do. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.